Yes, yes. A rich Akeem Richens, trendsetters. You already know. If you don't know me, get to know me. Hope everybody's enjoying their Friday so far. Early Friday afternoon, I might add. Depending on where you at, maybe a little bit earlier. I'm going to have my boy come on, Dave Myers. We're going to talk some, some post-draft. We all got that initial reaction out through, uh, during the draft. We had our feelings, our emotions was heavily involved during the draft. So we have may have got sidetracked at the time during the draft. But now that the dust has settled, we can really sit back and process who we drafted, who we selected, our quarterback, our linebackers, all the draft picks. Now we can really talk with a clear mind and really deep dive and discuss uh, how we feel about our draft and how we feel about our team going forward. And I'm going to wait for my buddy Dave to get on. Me and Dave, we got this camaraderie going where we, we feel like we mesh well together. So I'm not going to hesitate to bring him on. Charlie, what's going on, Charlie? What's going on, bro? Chris, what's up, Chris? How's everything? How's everybody doing? I hope everybody had a productive week once again. Trendsetters is back. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited about our draft picks. I'm excited about who we selected. Um, I'm excited about our quarterback. Now that we know exactly who our quarterback is, we get to really deep dive and dissect and watch the film work on the guy we actually have instead of speculating on who we want or who we might get and looking at everybody's film and just trying to pick holes and pick our favorite film out the bunch. We selected Josh Allen. Whether you like it or not, right, wrong, or indifferent, we selected Josh Allen. I'm going to get my boy on here so we could, uh, so we can definitely chop it up and, and, and see his thoughts as well. Get Dave Myers on here. See if I can send you an invite, Dave. Joe, what's going on, Joe? What's going on? How's everything? How's everybody? Trying to send Dave an invite. I don't know why I can't send him an invite for the meantime. Maybe you could extend an invite, Dave. And we can we can work out the process through there. But Joel, I know Joel was heavy on Sam Donald. We had some Baker Mayfield fans. We had some Josh Rosen fans. We had a lot of different guys that we liked. Me personally, I wanted uh I, I wanted Josh Rosen. When you're sitting right there at seven, and Josh Rosen and Josh Allen is both on the board at the same time, of course. You're going to think Josh Rosen. <laughs> of course, we're thinking about uh, the gifted passer at the time. We're thinking about the guy who can immediately or who we think as fans, we're not scouts, who can immediately get us better. And that was Josh Rosen. And when Josh Allen was called, there was a lot of interesting faces. My face, Rico's face, a lot of, a lot of interesting faces, to say the least, when we got the guy uh, Josh Allen selecting him over Josh Rosen. We see how Josh Rosen feels. He's been able to talk a lot. He's felt that it's nine or ten mistakes um, that other teams has made not selecting him. We feel that we got a good guy. We feel that we got the correct Josh. Brandon Bean himself said we would have selected Josh Allen whether it was cold weather, Buffalo, or if it was in a dome. So it seems as if we got the guy that we wanted, and that's all we can ask for, getting up, getting the guy that we want to get. There's no more retreats. There's no more uh, teams that quarterbacks we take from other teams. We're going to get the guy that we really wanted and we got with Josh Allen. So speaking of him, what do we get? What do we get? We got a guy who's prob probably the most athletic quarterback in the draft, not name Lamar Jackson, obviously, right? We also got a guy with the strongest arm that we haven't seen in the last decade to 15 years. He's challenging Matt Stafford right now for the strongest arm in the league. And uh, the way he looked at his pro day and the way he launches that ball, he or may come into the league with the strongest arm. But we all know that doesn't transition 
just because you have the strongest arm into becoming a good quarterback or a great quarterback. So what are some assets that we can hone off of that we can look at from Josh Allen to make us feel like we've got our guy? Number one, my opinion. Everybody talks about how ultra smart Josh Rosen is. And when you talk about Josh Rosen, we think about how smart he is. He's so smart. He's so, so intellectual. He's he's one of the smartest guys to be around. But when you look at the Wonderlick, Josh Allen had the highest Wonderlick out the bunch. And the last time I, te I checked, Josh Allen uh, took the same Wonderlick Josh, Josh Rosen has, has taken. And he's got the higher one. So his smarts is undeniable. If you looked at uh, the Kirk Cousins and Josh Allen, we posted those up on Bills Fanatics. Those are great, great looks, by the way. Kirk Cousins definitely has a job when he retires. He did an excellent job talking to certain quarterbacks, breaking down plays, breaking down players, and getting to know these guys. And he did an excellent job with his three segments with Josh Allen. We got to know Got to know him personal, personally a little bit. We got to know uh, how his mind thinks, how he reacts. He's definitely a smart guy. He definitely can pick up on different plays. He knows his plays. He knows what other players are supposed to do. And I hope that can be an advantage for him and us when it's time to strap up on Sundays. What we have to do is get Josh Allen as in the film room. It is necessary for Josh Allen to get as much film study as humanly possible. He has to get used to seeing these complex defenses. He has to get used to seeing uh, these different zone reads and these different man coverages that a lot of these defensive coordinators are going to design for him, which he looked kind of rattled coming from Wyoming, playing them less than desirable defenses in the conference he's played. Now he's transitioning over to the NFL. He's going to have to adjust. He's going to have to learn, and he's going to have to learn quickly. How quickly he learns is all up to him. His process of his preseason, a lot of people feel that some players need to start. <laughs> if you talk to some people, you talk to Pierre, you talk to some guys, they like, listen, our rookie quarterback needs to start from game one. There's others that, mean, that say, you know what, Josh Allen needs to sit, he needs to learn the process, he needs to know exactly what he's getting into, he got to realize and understand the speed of the game. You got four months. Pierre makes a lot of great points, makes a lot of great examples from April until the first game of the season. You have a few months to prepare. You have a few months to get ready. And what I've seen from Josh Allen from the end of his Wyoming season to uh, the end of the Senior Bowl was vast improvements. We've got some plays that we've seen that we shared amongst ourselves in the Bills Fanatic page where Josh Allen made vast improvements throwing the ball. A lot of people think he have accuracy issues. A lot of people think he has issues in terms of anticipating the pass and throwing wide receivers open. We have some film. We have some pictures that may, that may disagree with some of those stints. And his improvement from his last year, his last game in Wyoming, to the Senior Bowl is tremendous. So since he has four months to prepare, we're hoping that Josh, uh, Josh Allen can improve even more. And maybe he could be the starter sooner than later. But that's all up to him. You heard Brandon Beam. He's coming in as the third quarterback. We have A.J. McCarron, who's not going to give up that starting job. A.J. McCarron came to Buffalo to be the starting quarterback. I believe A.J. McCarron is, is somebody that has something to prove himself. And we can't forget about Nate Peterman. Just because Nate Peterman threw five interceptions, that doesn't mean we should write him off. If you know Nate Peterman's history, once again, he went to Tennessee for a while before he transferred to Pittsburgh. He had a similar game, a similar situation where he threw a number of picks. And Peterman was probably overlooked, but he got better as the years progressed, and he beat number one the the number one team in Clemson a couple years later. So Nate Peterman, I'm really really excited to see, and I really think he's going to improve. And I think our quarterback room is a lot better than we're getting credit for right now. Let me see if I can take some um take some questions, some comments. Pete, what's going on, Pete? What's going on, Joe? Not when Bean loves Allen. Tom, Tom Winner, not when Bean loves Allen. What you mean? What don't you like about Josh Allen? Tom, Bean made it known that he liked how, how Philly did it. That cried out Josh Allen. Pete, what's going on? Allen wasn't my top choice, but we got our guy. He's definitely a better character fit than Rosen. And again, 
he he is a better character fit than Rosen, even though I'm not going to go crazy on the character fit because if Josh Rosen comes out and performs, people is not going to care <laughs> how his character is. If he's coming out and he's balling and he's progressing like a lot of analysts and a lot of scouts think he's going to progress. But we definitely going to see. Sean, what's going on? Sean, what's goody? Today, today's my birthday. Hey, happy birthday, Sean, everybody. Sean, Sean's birthday. Happy birthday, Sean. That's Taurus season, Sean. Taurus season. My birthday was Tuesday. Anton, what's going on? Josh Allen would be just fine. I hope so. I hope so. I was looking at some articles that we that we have on um on Bleacher Report. I'm not a big articles guy, but sometimes I go I do go and dive into the articles, and they got uh, a floor, a ceiling, and what he probably would be, and that's Josh Allen. Josh Allen's floor, uh. Uh, I believe it's Jake Locker. They had Jake Locker as Josh Allen's floor. His ceiling is Ben Roethlisberger. And his median is Joe Flacco. Can I agree with that assessment? I could probably see that a little bit. I probably would have took out Ben Roethlisberger and put in Cam Newton. Uh, I think that's a better ass assessment because I think Josh Allen is a better athlete than Ben Roethlisberger is. But I like that floor, ceiling, and that median assessment from one of the guys on Bleacher Report, but we'll definitely see. Tom, you don't give up picks 53 and 56, which would surely be two starters for Allen to sit. We don't know that. We gave up 53. We didn't give up 53 and 56 for somebody to sit this year. We gave up 53 and 56 for somebody that could be our franchise quarterback for the next 10 years, the next 15 years. It's not a... This is not a one-year investment. This is a franchise decision move. This is a franchise altering move. And when you want your guy and you want to get your guy, you have to give up what you have to give up. And let's call a spade a spade here. We kept the 22nd overall pick in the first round. We had two first-round picks. We kept one of the first-round picks. Let's look at one of them first-round picks as a second-round pick. I would rather have that 22, first round, 22 overall first round pick than both second round picks. We use that 22 pick in the first round to eventually get Tremaine Edmonds, who is, a, who is a rare, rare combination of size, speed, and agility coming from the linebacker position. So I cannot be mad at us giving up both them second round picks. We got Tremaine Edmonds. We got our quarterback on offense. We got our quarterback on on defense, and we didn't mat, uh, mortgage any future picks. We didn't mortgage no picks in 2019. We didn't mortgage no picks in 2020. What else do you want? <laughs> what else do you want? I mean, you have to give up something to get something, especially a quarterback. So I def I'm definitely not mad at giving up two of them second round picks. I love I love him. I wanted him. I, I assume you're talking about Josh Rosen. Jeff Tyson, what's going on? Allen going to start. It's his job to lose at, at camp. He was drafted seven overall. Let's rip. Hey, we're, we're going to see. I really believe in my heart of hearts that it's going to be a quarterback competition. Again, A.J. McCarron did not come to Buffalo to sit on the bench. Of course, his performance, the way he progresses on the field is going to tell that story ultimately. But A.J. McCarron, let's not sleep on A.J. Let's understand that we probably can have a great situation. I'm not hoping that A.J. McCarron busts out, but we get this franchise guy in Josh Allen. I'm hoping A.J. McCarron balls out. I'm hoping Josh Allen balls out. The, the more people that ball out is the better proposition for us. I like problems like that. Then we could use certain guys as trade assets and, and build and con keep continuing building the future of the team if both of these quarterbacks ball out. So I'm hoping that AJ McCarron comes out and performs well. And I'm also hoping that Josh Allen comes out and perform well. And we're not trying to rush the rookie. We're not trying to rush him. If he looks like he needs to take a step back. And, and watch the game, hold a clipboard, hold A.J. McCarron's water for a minute, then that's what he's going to do. If he looks like he's that guy and he's ready, then I'm pretty sure we're going to put him out there. I really believe in my heart of hearts, once again, the better performer, the best man will win the starting uh, quarterback job for our team, Buffalo Bills. Sean, what's going on? Mike, Brett Favre is the best ceiling comparison to Allen, in my opinion. They are very, very similar. And that's that's high praise for Josh Allen. Brett Favre, Josh Allen, that's definitely high praise. I don't think Brett Favre was the athlete that Josh Allen is. 
So that's why I wouldn't go and compare. But I understand what you mean in terms of the arm. I understand what you mean in terms of in terms of delivering the football. So I understand the comparison. But again, that's high, high praise. I'm not mad at your comparison. Tessie, Ricky Butts, what's going on? I think we are due for another Jim Kelly-like play in Buffalo. Allen looks good and can only get better. I'm hoping so. It looks like he progressed Again, from the end of the season to the Senior Bowl, he has another few months. I'm pretty hope. I'm pretty sure he can progress from now until training camp to preseason starts. So we definitely going to see. That's what we want to project as scouts, as analysts. For the most part, when you're looking at college players, you're not looking at the college players for necessarily what they are at the time. Obviously, what they are has some importance to them, to it, but ultimately, you're looking at what the guy can be. What, what can he possibly be? What can you project this guy to be? So I think our scouts did their job in terms of what they see or what they can project Allen can be. And the ceiling and the sky is definitely the limit. Tom, perfect scenario is AJ balls out and wins so Allen can observe. But if he fails and loses, it's Allen. Of course, of course. If he fails, if AJ McCarron comes out and he looks like a bum, he's throwing picks everywhere and he's losing out to Josh Allen, it may not be necessary to keep an A.J. McCarron on the team if he doesn't perform up to standards. If Josh Allen obviously beats him out, we got a, a Nate Peterman who I don't think is getting cut. I don't think Sean McDermott is just going to give up on Nate Peterman. He's not a Rex Ryan guy. He's not a Rex Ryan pick. Sean McDermott drafted Nate Peterman himself. So I think he's going to be on the team regardless. If A.J. McCarron doesn't come up and perform like he should be, uh, he could be subjected to release. Who knows? We don't know. But I don't think AJ McCarron is going to come and, pick and perform poorly. I think I really have faith in AJ McCarron. Is he an elite quarterback? I don't know. I don't think he's going to be an elite quarterback, but I definitely think he can come in and do a good job and get us some victories. Jeff, what an awesome draft. Hey, I, I think so too. Let's talk about the rest of the guys on the draft. Um, we got Josh Allen. We got Tremaine Edmonds, who I, I always felt that he was the best linebacker in this draft. Of course, Raquan Smith is the obvious award winner. He's going to get, he got all the college trophies. He's the one that's being looked at on the highest light. He's the first linebacker taken off the draft, Raquan Smith. But as good as I feel that Raquan Smith is and, and is going to be, I think the ceiling as far as an NFL prospect is higher for Tremaine Edmonds. Now, if you look at the two, I love Raquan Smith. But he's a smaller guy. He's about 6'2". He's about 230, 235 pounds, which is, which is now the modern NFL linebacker today. Obviously, it's not, like, it's not the same as 10 years ago when we had these Brandon Spikes kind of linebackers and these Bart Scott and uh, kind of linebackers and these big 260-pound middle linebackers that was two-down guys and was third-down guys on occasion but can't really run sideline to sideline. That's why Preston Brown was a liability for our team. If Preston Brown was the uh, Buffalo Bills linebacker 10 years ago, he might be still a Buffalo Bill today. But now that we're playing in a more modern NFL, when these athletes and these offensive schemes are more spread out and it's more about speed and it's more about sideline to sideline guys, that, that's what made Preston Brown more of a, liabil a liability. And when you look at Raekwon Smith, as good as he is right now, he's a smaller guy in stature, he's a little lighter, and that's fine. But when you got a guy in Tremaine Edmonds who is 6'5", who is three inches taller than Raekwon Smith, who is uh who runs a 454 just as fast if not faster than Raekwon Smith and he's 25 pounds heavier than Raekwon Smith now we're talking about a guy that's rare yeah there's they're not there's not a lot of guys like a Tremaine Edmonds who's 6'5 256 pounds and run a 454 who can stay with running backs who can stay with slot receivers who can match up with tight ends that is rare to find, and we have him on our team. And if he ever uh, builds his instincts like I think he's going to as a 19-year-old, just turned 20-year-old guy, I think by far, 
three, four years down the road, if all God willing and he stays healthy, that he could be the best linebacker coming out the draft. We can put this man on a running back. We could put this man on a slot receiver. We can put him on Gronkowski. Last year, we had Tredavious Tr White on Gronkowski. Now, now, that's no disrespect to Tredavious White. He's a fine athlete. He's an excellent football player. But size matters in the NFL. Believe it or not, size matters. Now, all of a sudden, you could put a Tremaine Edmonds on Ron Gronkowski, who's just as big, who's just as strong, who's just as fast. The matchup is a little bit different. Can you agree with that? It's just, it's just a whole lot of things we can do with Tremaine Edmonds that I don't think we can do with anybody else coming out the draft. And I just love that selection. We're going to talk about Harrison Phillips. I love Harrison Phillips as well. I love uh, what he brings to the table. I love his high motor. I love his high energy. Everybody's comparing him to Kyle Williams 2.0. I think there's a little difference. One guy is a one technique. The other guy is a three technique. But nevertheless, I believe Harrison Phillips is going to be a fine player as well. He has to work on, from the film I've seen, he has to work on his pad level. He has to get lower. Uh, Kyle Williams is already lower to the ground. Kyle Williams is about six feet, six foot one maybe. Uh, Harrison Phillips is about six four. So he plays a little high. And when you play a little high, if anybody gets under your pads, they're going to have that leverage. And I've seen a couple games. I believe one, against, one of them against... Uh, Rashad Penny's team, San Diego State, where the offensive line got under his pads a lot and he was moved off the ball a little more uh, than my liking. But nevertheless, Harrison Phillips is an excellent selection. Anybody that gets 100 tackles from the DT spot is, is doing something, especially coming from a Power 5 conference in Stanford. You move over to Teron Johnson. Teron Johnson didn't have the greatest of senior bowls, but again, we're talking about a player who won the Defensive player in the year in his conference. So if you win defensive player in the year, I know it's not the Big Ten. I know it's not the SEC or the ACC, but it has to say something about you as a player. And coming into this zone scheme that Sean McDermott implements, I think he's going to be a fine player and he's going to come in and contribute right away as well. Can't forget the Virginia Tech guard, Wyatt Teller. I like what he's done. I think Wyatt Teller and John Miller, if we get this bias if our, quarter, if our offensive line coach Juan Castillo get this bias for Vladimir Dukas out his system, I think that John Miller, he's been working hard this offseason, and he's coming to try to take a guard spot. Siron Neal, the two receivers that we selected, uh, I'm not sure about. It looked like Siron Neal from the one film that I did watch from NFL Draft Diamonds. Shout out NFL Draft Diamonds. He had, a, he had some excellent feel on Siron Neal. He looked like a ferocious tackler. He looked like a physical player. So I love physicality. So I love the pick. He's going to have to get in uh, training camp and preseason to see how he actually performs on the NFL level. But we definitely going to see. Chris, what's going on? Don't sleep on Nate. Definitely not sleeping on Nate. Definitely can't sleep on Nate Peterman. Let's not write a guy off. Because he threw five picks. A lot, of, a lot of people are hung up over scouts. Scouts are just like human beings, just like us. I mean, they should know more. They get paid to know more. They get paid to see more. But at the same time, scouts are just like us. So we're, we're hung up over the fact that the, the scouting report on Nate Peterman was the most pro-ready quarterback. One of the more pro-ready quarterbacks in the NFL draft. And then when he comes out, he plays San Diego. He throwing five picks in the first half. It's like, hold on. Only thing I can think of <laughs> is the scout saying he's the most pro ready in the NFL draft. So let's not go ahead and degrade Peterman. Let's kind of give those scouts a little bit of a side eye. These same scouts that feel that Sam Donald's the best quarterback in the draft. These same scouts that feel that Josh Allen was... Was not the best of moves. It's the same scouts that said Nate Peterman was the most pro re in the draft. Let's not give Nate Peterman the side eye with that. Let's look at the scouts. I believe Nate Peterman, because of his history and me following him a couple of years, I think he's going to be fine. Was he the most pro ready? I think that's a little bit of an overstatement that we took and we believed from the scouts, from the professionals. So let's not go crazy with that and let's give Nate Peterman a chance as well. Dylan. We had an amazing draft and filled holes where needed. We had a still undrafted free agent signing. Oh, yes, the Foster kid from Alabama. I hear, I'm hearing a lot of good things from the Foster kid. Um, I like our receiving core. 
I like it okay. Do I feel that we needed to upgrade? Me, for one, personally, I felt that we needed to upgrade at receiver somewhere during the draft. Hopefully, we could find a diamond in the rough. Maybe it could be Ray Ray. Maybe it could be Pro, the uh, North Carolina uh, seventh-round selection. Maybe it could be Foster, the undrafted free agent. But I definitely think, I definitely thought we needed an uh, upgrade at receiver somewhere, somewhere. When I seen Dallas give up a six-round pick, to get Tavon Austin, I'm like, damn. Tavon Austin, he's not an elite wide receiver by any stretch of the imagination. But who would you rather have there? Would you rather have Tavon Austin in that in that position? Or would you have Kalen Clay in that position? I like Kalen Clay a little bit. But I'd much rather have Tavon Austin taking the top off the defense rather than Kalen Clay. So when I seen that just for a six-round pick, I'm like, damn. Why didn't Buffalo pounce on that? That would have been a nice, that would have been a nice fit in my opinion, for our team. But nevertheless, hopefully we can find a diamond, diamond in the rough at wide receiver with one of the seven-round selections or the un, undrafted guy in Forster. Tassie, Ricky Buss, what's going on? We got the best quarterback in the draft, and we needed a young quarterback for our future. I, I could agree. The best quarterback in the draft is remains to be seen. It remains to be seen. But I definitely can agree. I do know one thing. It's kind of like the triangle, a triangle offense is what I see with some with these quarterbacks. Sam Donald, Josh Allen, Josh Rosen. We could have selected Josh Rosen. We went with Josh Allen, and we got Sam Donald in the AFC East as well. So these three quarterbacks, the whole entire the entire draft class is going to be tied together. But especially these three quarterbacks, they're definitely going to be tied together, and we're we're going to be making comparisons. Two years from now, three years from now, of who got the best quarterback in the draft. Tom, I have no problem with two picks for Allen, but he plays but he plays if they start to lose with AJ. Of course, of course. That's what happens with all teams. That's what's gonna happen with all teams. If Sam Bradford wins the job in Arizona and he's out there struggling, they're gonna call for Josh Allen. If Tyrod Taylor is the starting quarterback with the Cleveland Browns and he comes out there and start doing some Tyrod Taylor things and missing some guys and not seeing some guys, they're going to be calling for Baker Mayfield. If Josh McCallum is not performing with the Jets, they're going to be calling for Sam, Do uh, Sam Donald. So it, it, the argument can be made for every team, but we're going to hope the best for our team. I hope the best for AJ. I know Josh Allen is the future. The question is when. When does his future become the present for Josh Allen? Is it this year? Is it next year? Is it game four? Is it game five? Is it game three? That, that's what remains to be seen. And I can't wait to find out what happens. I really can't. Tom, Jeff, I like, I like the late picks. Hell, the whole draft, but these cornerbacks, but these cornerbacks and wide receivers. Now, again, how do you feel about our cornerbacks? I like our cornerbacks. Of course, we want to have the best cornerbacks possible, but I believe we have a system. Uh, Sean McDermott have a system to make these cornerbacks play a little better than what they actually are. And Vontae Davis, I'm not sure how much he has left in the tank. We're definitely going to find out. We're hoping he's healthy. We're hoping that the struggles we've seen from Vontae Davis in the Indianapolis Colts uniform was because he was injured and not because he's completely fell off the radar. We're going to see what Vontae Davis does. Philip Gaines struggled. I know he looked uh, like a liability in Kansas City. He was being picked on a lot. I even remember when we played the Kansas City Chiefs, we went Philip Gaines' direction a lot. But again, Philip Gaines was under Bob Sutton as a defensive coordinator. He's coming over here. He's got a different scenery. He got a different defensive scheme that he plays. And I think Philip Gaines is going to surprise people. I actually like... The Philip Gaines signing because we're talking about a kid that's a very good athlete. He ran a 4-3-4 in the combine. I like Philip Gaines. I like Philip Gaines for this scheme, and I think he's going to be fine. So we're going to see what happens with the cornerbacks this season. I love our safeties. We got Raphael Bush. We got Siren Neal, who I think is I think is a, a Swiss Army knife. We're going to see how well he could pick up on the pro game, pro uh, game, and we're going to see what happens from there. Um, Give me your thoughts on Des Bryant. Des Bryant is still a free agent. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if Des Bryant being a free agent is a red flag or, or what this, the case is with Des Bryant. Do you think we should make a case for Des Bryant? Do you think Des Bryant would help the team or hurt the team? Some people think Des Bryant can help the team because 
Calvin Benjamin get, may get hurt again. Zay Jones may run around naked somewhere again. We don't know. We may need the, uh, a Des Bryant to come in and fill in when necessary. Other people may feel that, hey, Des Bryant, he has some character issues. Des Bryant is not the guy that he once was. Des Bryant wants more money than he's actually worth. And he's going to stunt the growth of a Zay Jones and certain guys in, in, in the wide receiver room. So what y'all think about Des Bryant? Leroy, AJ comes and put the ball out. We could we could go one or two things. AJ could be traded for a second or third round pick or because of how cheap his contract is for the second year and get Allen to sit and learn more. Hey, definitely, definitely, definitely. We're we going to see what happens. The, the play and the performance is going to determine it all. Tom, Edmonds and Allen, Allen, uh, Edmonds and Allen may end up in the wall on the wall. I hope so. If they end up in the wall, there's definitely some Super Bowls coming behind it. Jeff, I might actually be Super Bowl before I die. Hopefully, might actually see Super Bowl. Hopefully, I hope so too. I really hope so too. Dave says, "Try me now. We should be good." Okay, we are gonna see. Hey, Dave, can you send the link? Can you send the link? If you can send that link, uh, we definitely can talk about Des Bryant a little bit. We gonna get you get your thoughts about Des Bryant and how you feel about him. But um. Can, can we afford Dez? Tassie Ricky says, can we afford Dez? Now, if Dez want to play football, he's going to have to become affordable. If Dez Bryant wants to play football, you have to become affordable. Yes, yeah, getting reports out that Dez Bryant wouldn't even get the veterans minimum from a lot of teams. And there's been reports that NFL execs and Dallas executives says he can't separate no more. So, I... I don't know about Des Bryant. I, would I like Des Bryant on my team? If I'm thinking about Des Bryant and I'm thinking about the name Des Bryant, shit. That's Des Bryant. Hell yeah, I want him on the team. But if I'm thinking about Des Bryant and I'm thinking about what everybody's saying about Des Bryant, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if I want Des Bryant anymore. The more I hear Des Bryant talk, let me, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm going to make an a NBA comparison to Des Bryant, and y'all let me know if y'all kind of feel the comparison, or if I'm like, nah, you know what, A. Rich, you're bugging, I don't see it. I'm going to make a football, uh, a basketball comparison who I think Des Bryant reminds me of right now in this stage of, the, of his career. Desmond Bryant is the football's version of Carmelo Anthony. Think about that. Desmond Bryant is the football's version of of Carmelo Anthony. I'm like, we're talking about both guys that was once stars. We're talking about both guys who still believe they're stars now, but they're not stars anymore. You're talking, you heard, you hear Car Carmelo Anthony with, with OKC. He didn't perform like a superstar, but yet he's still thinking in his mind he's a superstar. He is unwilling to take a bench role. He's unwilling to do certain things like he's still a stupid superstar. And he's not that guy anymore. And I'm starting to get the same correlation from Des Bryant. Des Bryant, you was a superstar, but you're not that guy anymore. You're not that same guy that, you're not the same guy on the field which you think you are in your mind. And I think uh, Des Bryant and Carmelo Anthony got that same complex going on. Y'all let me know if y'all agree or disagree. Uh, Dave, I'm trying, I don't know, I, I can't see nothing where I can send you, a, where I can send you an invite, this is the first time it's happening, I don't know, maybe I need to update my phone, I don't know, but we definitely going to get on next time, Tom, Zay Jones is bare ass, uh, hell runner, <laughs> yeah, that was funny, that was funny with Zay, uh, Jeff, Rod Streeter better than Dez, <laughs> well, Rod Streeter, Rod Streeter gotta stay healthy, Rod Streeter gotta stay healthy, I like what I've seen from Rod, but again, he has to stay healthy, we are good at wide receiver. Jeff thinks we are good at wide receiver. I'm not mad at that at all. When I think about Des Bryant right now, I, me personally, I'm good off Des Bryant. I'm good off Des Bryant. I mean, there's no disrespect. Could he be an upgrade? It's possible that he could be an upgrade, especially if we get injured. His veteran knowledge, his veteran leadership and skills. Of course, he could be an upgrade. But like, like I would say with Carmelo Anthony, does Car is Carmelo Anthony going to actually help a team win an NBA championship? Is Carmelo Anthony going to get other players around him better? I don't think so. Is Des Bryant going to help you win? Is Des Bryant going to help our Buffalo teams win? Is Des Bryant going to lead us somewhere that we're not we we uh we see us going? Is he going to lead us to a playoffs? Is he going to lead us to a championship? I don't think so. 
This is why I compare the two players, Carmelo Anthony and Des Bryant, because I see the same mantra with both guys. And me personally, I would stay away from both guys. <laughs> That's just how I feel about it. Dylan, clear old scouts when Bean got hired, he hired all his people. It was different when, when Nate was drafted. It was different when Nate was drafted, but one guy is still there that's similar, and that's the head coach, Sean McDermott. Sean McDermott had to sign off somewhere to get Nate Peterman in one Bills drive, but I understand the stance. Leroy, wow, nice. Leroy, do you what you you like that comparison? The Des Bryant Carmelo Anthony comparison? I think it's I think it's an honest comparison. Maurice, what's going on? Agree with Des. Agree with Des. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Foster can surprise if he can stay healthy. I hope so. I know Foster, he's a fast guy. I'm not sure why he didn't get drafted. Maybe the production, maybe he didn't have enough production. With Alabama, but coming from Alabama, you're going to get an opportunity. And Foster got an opportunity. We also got, uh, is it Levy? Is it Levy, another Alabama guy that was the walk on who was undrafted? These two Alabama guys, these two undrafted Alabama guys can possibly come in and take jobs and take roster spots. I'm, exi I'm excited to see what these Alabama guys can do. I'm excited to see if we can get. And the, another Nikel Roby, Roby story going on. It's been a while since we got had an undrafted guy come in, do his thing, ball out, take a spot, and actually earn playing time on the field. Nikel Roby did it some years ago. He uh he carved out a, a nice career for himself, unexpected career in most people's eyes. I'm hoping that uh these one of these Alabama prospects can come and do the same thing. Levy Wallace, definitely. There you go, Maurice. Appreciate it, Levy Wallace. I think he can make the team as well, especially in the system that we run. I think if he could come in and show that he can he can perform, he can stay in front he can stay in front of defenders and make some tackles. I believe D.V. Wallace has a, a good chance to make this team. I'm not sold on Lafayette Pitts. Guys like Lafayette Pitts and I forgot the other guys' names. Their their spot is up for the taking. So we definitely gonna see what Levy Wallace can do. Uh, Tassie, what's going on? In your opinion. How much longer is McCoy going to be productive? Well, he has two years left on his contract, LaShawn McCoy. He has this season and he has next season. I think LaShawn McCoy's season this year is going to determine whether we keep him next year. Because if we want to get out of LaShawn, uh, LaShawn McCoy contract the, uh, after this season, will be the best season to do it. So if he comes out and he performs this year, I really think LaShawn McCoy will be on the team next year. If he comes out and he doesn't perform or if he's... He, his yards per carry is, is worse than last year, which was his career low, four yards per carry. I think this could be the last year for LaShawn McCoy, but we definitely going to see. I, I'm a big Sean, LaShawn McCoy fan. I love LaShawn McCoy. I believe he's got a lot more in the tank. And, of course, we definitely have to see what happens. We definitely going to have to see how he performs, how his offensive line performs. The offensive line is obviously different. We're going to have three new starters entrenched in that offensive line. So it's going to, it's going to see. Right, one thing is for sure, Deshaun McCoy is determined to get 12,000 yards. He is determined to get that 12,000 yards. He's on a 12,000 yard chase. So uh, that's one of his individual goals. He seems like an individual guy in certain aspects. But at the same time, if he gets into 12,000 yards, he's a little over 10,000 now. That's going to benefit the team. And if he wants over 12,000 yards, if he got that 12K chase going, he's going to have to be productive this season to be productive next season to get those 12,000 yards. So he's definitely motivated to get uh, to get to that goal. And we're going to hope it helps the team be productive as well. Leroy, I love that NBA comparison. I was thinking Dwight Howard, but yours is more spot on. Hey, Leroy, I appreciate that. That's not a bad analysis either, Dwight Howard. But I, that's the first guy I definitely thought of, Carmelo Anthony. Uh, Jeff Tyson, McCoy is on a pretty good contract, I believe. Um, he has two years left. He's here this year and next year. He signed a five-year deal when uh, Rex Ryan came. Uh, he has, he's on his final two years, so we're going to see what happens. Monster. Monster says 12K, 12K this year. Hey, Monster. If LaShawn McCoy gets 12K this year, then we he's either going to have a hell of a season individually or we done had a pretty damn good season as a team. I'm hoping I'm hoping for both cases. Tom, you won't find a better runner in the snow than Shady. Hey, Shady's elusive. He's quick. He keeps his footing. I love Shady. There's some people that want to that 
We're probably trade Shady in the offseason if we had to get our quarterback. I'm happy we was able to keep Shady and we able to keep a, a good running back to help our rookie. Because believe it or not, a good running back, a good, a good leader, uh, an experienced running back, that also helps the progression of a rookie as well. And I love the fact that we got Chris Ivory backing him up. We still got uh, Taiwan Jones. We got Cadet. I like the depth that we have at the running back position, and I think we can utilize that to help our rookie. Uh, hopefully, Charles Clay can get more implemented in the offense. I'm still waiting for Charles Clay. I know he had 500 yards the last two seasons. I'm still waiting for him to, to give us more. When I think of Charles Clay and I think of his potential and I think of his attributes, I think of his talent, the mismatches he can cause, I just want to see more from Charles Clay. Combine that with O'Leary. And who knows? Our receiving core uh, mixed in there with our tight end corps is not as bad as everybody think it is. You got Kelvin Benjamin on the outside. You got Zave Jones on the other outside. You put in Jeremy Curley in the slot. Jeremy Curley is a wildly veteran. Hopefully no ghost appears in Jeremy uh, Curley's locker room. <laughs> Hopefully we don't, he don't have other ghosts that come through and, and hurts the team suspended. Because Jeremy Curley is going to play a crucial role for our Buffalo Bills team. He's, he's going to be the Deontay Thompson this year. So Jeremy Curley, I hope he's ready. And if we can get production... Out of other guys, Ray Ray, Andre Holmes, Kalen Clay, Charles Clay, uh, o, uh, Nick O'Leary. I think our, our, our group as a whole is, is a lot better than what we're getting credit for. And the quarterback uh, position can make it look a lot better if he can complete the passes to our necessary receivers. So we definitely going to see. Joe, yeah, Pierre, fuck that shady stays. <laughs> Definitely. Hey, I didn't wanna I didn't wanna say who. I didn't wanna go into who, monster, but we all we all kinda got ideas who is throwing Shady's name out there. Now again, if Shady comes out and he doesn't produce, you're gonna hear a lot of Pierre. <laughs> You're going to hear a lot of Pierre talks and a lot of I told you so's. But again, we definitely going to see. I'm not mad at the move. I believe Shady McCoy is going to be an integral part of the offense this year, like he has been the last couple of years. And we definitely hope that uh, that he gets his 12K chase. He he eclipses that 12K in a Buffalo Bills uniform. That would be a great thing to see. Leroy, Akeem, what was your reaction to the pick of Edmonds? I know you were like me and loved the dude. Me, I went nuts. I had everyone in Buffalo Wild Wings staring at me. Hey. Again, Tremaine Edmonds, I love, I, that's my man crush. <laughs> Tremaine Edmonds was my man crush. He, he's big, fast, and physical. That's, that's, something, that's something that you can't, that's, that's rare. A lot of these linebackers today are good linebackers. They're 6'2", they're 6'1", and they're 5'8". Some of them are 6'3". Then you have other linebackers that are 6'5", and they're running 4'8". So to get the size, speed, and athleticism behind one player that can guard multiple positions, you got to understand what his athletic freakish ability can do for a Sean McDermott scheme. Whoever can give possible nightmares, we can put Tremaine Edmonds on now. We can Imagine if we had Tremaine Edmonds back there last year instead of Preston Brown. You think Blake Bortles would be running all over the place? You think... Uh, Giovanni Bernard uh, against Cincinnati would be catching all these balls out the backfield if we had Tremaine Edmonds. Edmonds can take can completely blanket a guy if we choose to put him on a, a particular position. He can guard running backs. He's fast enough to guard running backs. He's big enough to guard receivers, and he's fast and big enough to cover some slot receivers. We're talking about a guy that ran a four five four. If I'm not mistaken, Jeremy Curley runs a 4-5, 4-6. He's just as fast as Jeremy Curley, and he's 60 pounds heavier. He's just as fast as a lot of receivers in the NFL today, and he's 30, 40, 50 pounds heavier than his receivers that run the same speed as him. So when you have a guy with rare ability like that, that can do a lot for your defense, and I think that's huge. Where are we going to line them up remains to be seen. I know from day one, Tremaine Edmonds is going to be a middle linebacker. But then again, you never know what may happen in the future. When we had Kiko Alonso, Kiko was the middle linebacker. 
And if he stayed healthy, he didn't blow out his knee, we would have got another traditional middle linebacker and put Kiko on the strong side so he could run all over the field and make even more plays. So are we going to do that with Tremaine Edmonds? Or is he going to be the middle linebacker from day one till year 10? We definitely going to see. But I, I love, I love Tremaine Edmonds. That's my man crush. Man crush Monday. My MCM this Monday? Tremaine Edmonds. Yep. I'm going to put him up this Monday. Look out for that. <laughs> Leroy. He was my crush as well. And the man is young. Only 20 years old. He's a baby. He's a baby. He's a baby. Tremaine Edmonds is a baby. A bottle is going to be his mouthpiece. That's how much of a baby he is. So I'm excited to see what he can do on the field. And Edmonds is only 20. Kid going to be amazing. Again, I love Tremaine Edmonds. I love the pick. I really like what we did in the NFL draft. And we're going to see if everything plays out to how Bean and McDermott and a lot of us Buffalo Bills fans imagine it can be. I'm hoping for the best. And I like our picks. Josh Allen, I didn't care for at first. But when you watch more film and when you get to know the actual guy that's on your team, you start to come around. You start to come around. And I think it could be a very, very good selection for years to come. I have to applaud Brandon Bean and Sean McDermott to stop toying with the position and going to get your guy. Go and get your guy. You have to applaud that. You don't have no retreats. You don't have no guys from other, no quarterbacks from other people's teams. You don't have no guy that other scouts found. You have your guy. So that I do applaud. Rob, would still love to add Bowman for, uh, for Edmonds to learn for a year. Again, maybe, maybe. We're going to see what happens with Bowman. Can he come in and help Buffalo? Yeah, he could come in and help Buffalo in terms of, I would love another linebacker. We have Matt Milano. We have Tremaine Edmonds. I would love Bowman. We could put him in the, in the linebacker slot and have Milano and Tremaine Edmonds on the outside. For now, we may have Zoe Alexander. I like Zoe, but of course, we can upgrade that position. The linebacker position is not finished upgrading. We have another year before we really entrench our linebackers that we really want as a core. We got possible two out of three. We need one more, and I think, if not this year, next year definitely we're going to finish that piece of the puzzle with the linebacking corps and add somebody else, and that will be our core for the next years to come. Um, again, man, this is Trendsetters. I'm excited to be on. I'm excited that y'all on. Give him feedback. We all got our, our initial draft reaction out the way. And now we can sit back on a, on, a, on a calm, easy, peaceful mind and really assess our draft picks. And when we do that, we had a pretty damn good draft, man. We had a pretty damn good draft. Leroy, more questions before I get out of here. Leroy, I didn't hate Allen, just him not being able to anticipate throws. Still like him more than Donald and Rosa. And, hey, Leroy. We got some we got some pictures we're gonna probably put out today. I'm gonna see if we can put them out today that would probably impress you, man. He did a lot of good things in the senior pro senior bowl. I seen vast improvements from Josh Allen, so we're gonna see. Maurice, Bowen would be a nice addition. Dan Morgan is the front office, will take Edmonds under his wing. That uh that's another thing. Dan uh, uh Dan Morgan, former Carolina Panther. Former Pro Bowl in 2004, took over, player pro personnel with the Buffalo Bills, replacing uh, Brian Gain, who's now the GM with the Houston Texans. Again, uh, Sean McDermott, that staff, they believe in camaraderie. They go and build it even more with the hiring of Dan Morgan. I like the hire. I hear that the Seattle Seahawks organization was real high on Dan Morgan. So for us to get a guy like that, we're going to see for ourselves, of course. But on... On face surface, on face value, it seems like a good hire. Hopefully, he can come in and we can keep our front office, that nucleus in, and develop as well. Because that's important as well. We have not only gelling on the field, but gelling off the field in the offices as well. We don't want, uh, we don't want all this high turnover from any part of our organization, whether it's in the office or on the football field. We got to find them core guys and hope we can keep and hold on to core guys to build what we ultimately, ultimately want to build. And that's a Super Bowl contending team year in and year out. Uh, Leroy, nothing but, hey, Leroy, nothing but love and respect for you too, man. We appreciate you. I appreciate you. Again, Bill's News uh, Consolidated 
Russell Bondon snapping to AJ McCarron week one is definitely possible. They definitely know each other well. Uh, Ryan Groy is going to have something to say about that, of course, but you never know what may happen. The best man is going to be starting. I really feel that. I really believe Sean McDermott is going to instill that into the players, and we're going to see. Once again, it's been my pleasure. A. Rich, Akeem Richens. If you don't know me, get to know me. Until next time.